Hey Siri, name a playing card. Okay, it's the two of spades this time. Two of spades. I mean, it technically could be any card. It doesn't matter which card gets named. Um, it could be you, a spectator, even Siri. All you have to do is just push here like this and watch. Buff. That two of spades comes straight through every single card and that box. Full deck of cards here. Hey Siri, name a playing card. Three of clubs. Uh, technically, it works with any card whatsoever, but look, this is all you do. We just cut the cards here, and immediately, one card turns face down. The three of clubs. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my channel. Every holiday we travel to either Florida with my family or in this case, Texas to my wife's family. Um, as you can probably hear from my voice, I've been super sick for the last maybe three, four days. Our family has treated us beyond like royalties, making sure we're super comfortable, making us soup, making sure we feel good. Uh, so I'm incredibly thankful and also for letting me film in their house. I've taken up their whole entire kitchen, living room, dining room. I even got an amazing belated birthday cake, which is absolutely beautiful. So thank you so much. I actually had a holiday video planned for you guys with over 12 holiday tricks, including Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, and some Christmas tricks. I wasn't able to film that. We'll have to leave that for next holiday season. What I did come up with in bed is a couple tricks. You guys have been asking for DAX. When is it going to come out? So what I did is I took my favorite routines from DAX and I worked out some ways in which we can do it without needing DAX. You've already seen what they look like, so we just have to learn it. These slides are way easier than they seem and I tried to make every action motivated. Let's start with the card through box. The most important thing is the card case placement. You wanna grab the case so that the flap is facing up. Place it down in front of you. It should be naturally around 45 degrees, give or take, so that you can easily pick it up without having to twist your hand in a weird way. Have a card selected, returned, and then keep a break below that card. I like to leave my pinky on the card while all my other fingers and hand are completely relaxed. And it kind of looks a little bit messy and like there's no way we could control that card. This messiness is actually good because we are going to have to square the deck. And in that action, we're gonna use it as an excuse to steal that card. As we're squaring the cards, contact the selected card with the ring and middle finger of your dealer grip hand and your pinky from your biddle grip hand on the top corner of the selected card. Now this pinky is our pivot point. You can now use the ring and middle finger to pivot that card into palm. I like to use the edge of the hand as a stopper of the card so it doesn't slide more than it needs to and then it flashes. Once you've palmed the card in one continuous motion, you're just going to reach down to grab the card case with the pretext of putting the cards into the box. Notice how the index finger is curled to give the illusion that the hand couldn't be holding anything. Once the cards are inside the case, you'll want to rotate the case so it aligns with that palm card. And once they aligned, you'll just load it on the face of the card case. And we're doing this as we close the case. We're left holding the case at the fingertips. So now you can just push on top of the case to make that card penetrate the whole entire case and your trick is done. You could also have your spectator grip the deck and place it in their pocket. Then when you have them remove the card case from their pocket, the card is going to be left in their pocket and you can do some sort of magical appearance into their pocket if you so desire. You could also load it underneath a napkin by first showing that there's nothing underneath the napkin. You can then reveal that card however you want. Yet another thing you could do is show your hands empty and then steal that card maybe into cop as you hand the deck to your spectators or as you put it away in your pocket. In the intro, I used a memorized deck, uh, in this case, mnemonica, to find the card. As I talked about, any card could be named. If I had known I was gonna teach you this, I would have brought a marked deck. I like to use the P3, the Penguin marked deck. They're super affordable and incredibly good with all the marks all over the card. 
So it would be incredibly easy to do this with those decks. At the end of this video, I'm going to do a little practice or follow along section for this trick and the upcoming one. So make sure you stick around or um, if you come back to this video at any point, you can just refer to that little section to refresh all of those moves. Moving on to that reversed card trick. Any card can be named from a spread deck. And what you wanna do is place your middle finger from your mechanics grip hand on the top corner of the named or selected card. Once you have contact, you're going to close that spread and we're going to grip the deck in middle grip. The middle finger is contacting the card plus the inner connection right here in between the pinky and the palm, you want to also connect those points. By keeping these points in contact throughout the slide, we're gonna ensure that we don't flash. The pinky is going to function as a cover for this light. Our pivot points for this move are middle finger and thumb. We're going to be using our index finger to rotate the deck 180 degrees while at the same time keeping the selected card locked in place. Now all you have to do is cut the cards to the table and their card will be reversed in the middle of the deck. You can also just keep the card in that position and cop it out without actually revealing that it's face up in the middle of the deck. Since a lot of people asked me if we could do that Joker trick that I did in that switch video without decks, kind of worked out a way to do it with this move and that switch move from the video. For this, you're gonna need a full deck of jokers. Again, I don't have one here, so we'll have to imagine I have one, but you'll want to place the joker on the bottom of that regular deck that you're using. Switch the card and hand it to them. They may notice that the joker is on the face of the card, which is going to match the whole deck of jokers later which happens to be under the box. And it's not really a box, it's actually a shell of a box. This is gonna let us switch it in a moment. Once they think the trick is over, the card that they have is now their card, all you have to do is grab the deck with the joker facing up, you then take the card case shell and you're just going to transfer the shell from the joker deck on the table to the deck in your hand. Now this should go by completely unnoticed because they don't even know something like this is happening. They think the trick is done. But when you bring back the attention to that deck and you recall the effect, you can then spread the whole deck of jokers and show that it is the only card in the deck and every single other card was a joker. If you're liking this video, this is just a friendly reminder to hit the like button and subscribe so you can continue to see content like this. And before we move on to that practice section, I wanna share this little baby idea that I have with a pair of AirPods. I'm not gonna lie, it is a little bit knacky to get this down, but I figured for you knuckle busters out there, you may enjoy this little move. You want to take the AirPods by the short edges in the left hand, open the case and remove the right earphone. So we're gonna put it very carefully down on the table about 45 degrees. Make sure that you keep the case open and it doesn't close as you place it down on the table. So do it gently. If you have the AirPods Pro, you'll want to have the little black dot facing up. As you transfer the AirPods to the left hand, you'll clip that round portion at the base of the index and middle finger. This gives the illusion that the right hand is empty after that transfer, and you'll want to move your left hand as if you're adjusting the AirPods inside of your hand. This movement should direct their attention there so that when you grab the case and you load it, it goes by completely unnoticed. Start to move your hand as if you're going to pick up the case. You want to line up the stick of the AirPod to the opening of the case. Load it inside as you close the case and pick it up. From here, you can technically do anything at all that you want. What I did is I threw it at my hand so that it looked like the AirPod just went straight through and then you reveal that the AirPod is inside. Feel free to, as you pick it up, just hand it to someone, tell them to put it in their pocket, put it in your own pocket. You can even pretend like you put it here, snap your fingers and now the AirPod is gone and it'll reappear back inside. Or you just keep your hand here, you pretend to grab it, 
throw it at them, if you gave it to them to hold in their hand, now you have the AirPod Go from your hand into their hand. You can also just close it up, leave it on the table, and then pretend to push the AirPods up through the table, then you'll open it up and reveal that it actually did. Now we'll go through the little follow along section so you can practice the trick for the card through box, for the reversal, and for the AirPods trick. Again, I was hoping to make you guys a holiday video. As you can see, my energy is a little bit low and my voice is gone. Uh, but I wanna thank you so much for your time, for being here, for watching the video and for practicing these moves. I appreciate you, happy holidays, and I'll see you next week on Monday.